Write a letter from Yosemite. Write a letter, send it home. Can you tell me what it's like at Yosemite? Write me a letter. We are happy to be here from South Florida this week, sharing the program Songs and Stories or National Park in Our History. 1864, Civil War going on, and Abraham Lincoln took a break to take a piece of land down at the bottom of this cliff, and one over there called the Mariposa Grove, set them aside and gave them to the state of California as a land grant to protect forever. For myself. When the driver of that snow coach slams on the brakes, he points to a distant tree line some 300 yards away and says, Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at him and I said, you see a wolf over there? And he said, no, I don't see a wolf over there. They see a wolf over there. And he pointed to that herd of bison between us and that tree line. Ooh. And sure enough, all those bison were turned facing the same direction. Loyal Rabbit, we'll all feel gay when Johnny comes marching home. But 51,000 did not come marching home. 51,000 were killed, went missing, or were injured. Earlier than you might expect. And we really don't know if he had found something that day. Because as he was on his way out, pushing up a passageway at about this angle here with his toes, a passageway that was only about as big around as my hat is here, so small that he couldn't even get his shoulders through, so he put one arm forward and one arm back and pushed with his toes while he pushed that oil lantern in front of him in the sand. And he was getting fine through just fine until that lantern tipped over and left him in total darkness. <laughs> Floyd didn't care. He had been in the dark in a cave lots of times. So he continued to push with his toes, pushing that out. Yes, when you meet a bear. Yes, when you meet a bear. Yes, when you meet a bear. Never, 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 ever, ever run. <laughs> Less than a mile into their trip, when they encountered the Alabama River, crossed by a bridge named after a former Grand Dragon of the Ku Klux Klan. It's a high arched bridge so that when you go up one side, you don't really see what's on the opposite side until you get to the top. It was reached... April on the south rim of the Grand Canyon. I had gotten up before dawn to, uh, to go walk down to the edge of the canyon to watch the sunrise. And when I stepped outside, I discovered that it had snowed quite a bit overnight. So I grabbed an extra jacket and I walked down to the rim of the canyon, padding quietly. We continued down towards Greenwich Village. We turned into the narrow streets and the crowds got thicker and louder if that was possible. And then we made one more left turn down Christopher Street. And there I saw it, that little brick building where almost 50 years earlier, Bottles and rocks were thrown. I'll be sparkling, I'll be shining, and it's down to you and me to be their keeper for a time. But these diamonds, these little islands, how they sparkle, how they shine. And when I saw them heading out to the parking lot just a few minutes later, there was one thing I was sure of. They were American, 100%. And I sat down at that writing desk and wrote a Facebook post to all my friends and family about how amazing Yosemite was. I think Steve Mather would have approved. <laughs> Follow the advice of Simon and Garfunkel to look for America. They went to the Grand Canyon, they went to Yellowstone, they went to Bryce and Carlsbad. And guess which seven-year-old got to go along with them? Gary. 
I decided <laughs> that summer what I was going to do with the rest of my life. He answered in just about the best possible way I could ever imagine. He said, you know, sometimes it's less about the place than who's holding your hand while you're there. To you, sweetheart, aloha. In dreams, I'll be with you, dear, tonight. And I pray for that day when we two will meet again. Until then, sweetheart, aloha. Until then, sweetheart, aloha.